Well, the Barbie movie has finally come to streaming, and I actually quite enjoyed it. I thought it was successfully funny and absurd, and it didn't really lose its pacing until the last quarter or so. It was way better than I thought it would be. But to me, what makes Barbie interesting is that from the very beginning, it's full of social commentary and criticism. Not just criticising misogyny, but really more so corporatism and greed. And yet despite that, the film is inevitably a product. A product about a product. And the writers cannot escape the fact that, without corporatism and greed, this film would not exist, and nor would they as professionals. Watching Barbie is a bit like watching capitalism eat itself. Just a little bit. I was not expecting to say that. <laughs> I think it's worth stressing that I quite like Barbie. It is funny throughout, and many of its jokes are pretty ballsy, and, like the rest of the film, pretty direct. I also think Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling were perfectly cast, and if anything lets things down, it's the direction not quite living up to the writing, especially when it comes to a spasming Will Ferrell. I do have minor criticisms about the film generally, it gets a bit saggy in the later third, some of the jokes do fall flat, but for what it is, I thought Barbie was pretty, pretty, pretty good. So the film's story is a coming-of-age tale, where Margot Robbie plays generic Barbie Barbie, sequestered in Barbie world, where humanish Barbies and Kens of many shapes exist without fear or worry or rent. But Barbie has an existential crisis that leads her and Ken Ken, played by Ryan Gosling, to the real world, where, of course, chaos and hijinks ensue. Eventually, a not entirely informed Ken returns to Barbie Land with the intention of overthrowing the Barbie matriarchy and establishing a horse-led patriarchy, or something, and they both learn something along the way, I guess. But I was surprised how direct its comments on real issues were from the very beginning. They use the word plutocracy before the opening credits end. The movie, and the Barbies in the movie, are concerned about wealth's access and influence on democracy, the environment, equality, greed. I was almost expecting to see a quick pan over a statue of Lenin Barbie. The social commentary is not simply in the background, it's really the crux of Barbie's adventure although it's not completely barefaced until the end. This is the choice that makes Barbie interesting and not just okay, but also that wraps its message and subtext into a knot you'd need Alexander to undo. What I mean is, even as one of the most mainstream movies to have ever been made about a line of toys, the writers cannot help but insert their social angst, their inert nausea about inequality and all the hits which is good, which is honest, which is all valid, but that cannot sit with the fact Barbie is a two-hour, fun it may sometimes be, pay-to-see commercial for a plastic dolly. It was written and directed by millionaire industry insiders, beneficiaries of the system they criticize, on behalf of an industry, Bear Moth, worth $50 billion. And that's not to say that they're benefiting from something should stop them from criticising it, but rather that it sort of undermines all the subtext. And I'd compare that to Don't Look Up. Don't Look Up is an extremely thinly veiled movie about mortal inaction on climate change, which won't be addressed because people are too self-involved and greedy. But it's made by people with private jets and luxury yachts, motivated by nothing but money. I don't think anyone saw Don't Look Up and had their mind changed, and I don't think the makers of that movie really thought it would change anyone's mind either. It was never really about that. It was self-excusatory and pure masturbation. And so, and so, and so this too. Although Barbie's not really anywhere near as irksome or self-satisfied, and way funnier, with actual jokes and everything, 
it's kind of in the same boat. Not only does the powerful position of the makers undermine the subtext, it also prevents the narrative from really concluding anything. I mean, how could it end? Barbie confronts voter suppression on C-SPAN. I don't think it would have solved these issues, but I kind of expected Barbie to take the last meta step and have Barbie Barbie suddenly realise she's in a film Blazing Saddle style, ending with Margot Robbie freaking out because she's trying to be a serious actor, but she's in the Barbie film. But even then, its message would surely end up the same. A self-aware product is still a product. LOL. We're all shills. LOL. It's not exactly like I'm calling Gerwig and Baumbach hypocrites. It's like if I wore a Shein t-shirt that said, don't support child slavery. Don't support exploitation. The message is good, but... Uh, well, I guess I am calling them hypocrites. I suppose that was obvious from the beginning. Forbes reckons that a $70 million movie creates about 3,000 tonnes of CO2. Barbie costs twice that, and I reckon those lovely sets aren't exactly biodegradable. And again, none of this would be worth mentioning if the movie didn't prod me in that direction. <coughs> Leonardo and his yacht. What have we done to ourselves? How do we fix it? I do respect that the movie talks about these things, and discounting America Ferrara's little speech, it benefits the film. It's usually, or at least very often, presented in a very funny way. Yet, it never actually confronts these themes, which wouldn't be a fair expectation had the film not nailed down those tracks from the start. It presents the Mattel board as all-male buffoons, and most of the characters as easily led and totally lost, but it never begins to explain how patriarchy actually works, or what patriarchy actually is. It never really says anything about the issues it brings up in any meaningful way. I suppose this is because, by the nature of the film, it's someone else's skin on someone else's muscles on someone else's bones. The social conundrums in the script are really notable not because of what they bring up or even how, but that they exist at all. Did people at Mattel and Warner Brothers read Plutocracy, Patriarchy, Consumerism, and just shrug? Did they have a little meeting about this and wonder if Ted Cruz was going to call it Chinese propaganda? And if alt-right clamheads with the media literacy of an aggressive emu would miss the opportunity to cry socialist and instead goes to cries of misandry. Because for some reason, I have a feeling they did. I have a feeling all the people who got this made, not who made it, but who allowed it, did not miss the subtext, and that the film spends quite a lot of time criticizing generally them, and I guess they just thought, it won't hurt us a bit. Nobody cares, talk is cheap. And so, I would compare this film to a $40 Che Guevara t-shirt, not only in that it contradicts itself by existing, but that it in fact serves what it's criticising so very dutifully. But, I did enjoy it. Like your $40 Che Guevara t-shirt, it's wearable. I thought it was fun. I'd passively watch it again, just like Zoolander, another comedy film that skewers an industry that it really didn't harm at all, but kind of benefited from. Well, there you go. Support me on Patreon, like me on Twitter, ring that bell, eat a ding dong. Go crazy, you foolish kids. Live a little. Bye.